Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how you can do knowledge mapping using AI chatbots. That's a really interesting workflow, especially for researchers, because you can represent any ideas as a knowledge graph or a knowledge map, identify the main concepts inside, see how they connect to one another, reveal the high-level ideas and also see what are the gaps between them. And you can do that using the AI chatbot inside Infranodus itself. It's the tool that I'm using to visualize this data. Or using the Infranodus extension, if you're using ChatGPT, for instance, you can also identify the main topics, see what are the main concepts, identify the gaps, see how the topic evolved over time of the discourse and so on. So these are all really interesting ways to represent knowledge, to map a certain topic. And also what's really interesting here is that you can see in real time how AI is thinking by talking to it. I'm going to show you how it works first using Infranodus and then I will demonstrate how you can do that in ChatGPT. And then I will also show how you can compare different discourses. So how you can take a chat with a chatbot that you had uh, and a knowledge map that was generated using this chat and then how you can compare it with the synthetic data generated by AI to see if you're missing something and to see if you could add an interesting topic. And I will also show you how Infranodus uses insights from network analysis to identify how you could develop your discourse further in an interesting way by connecting it when it's too dispersed and by dispersing it when you're too focused on one idea, which can be especially useful to get rid of bias that we all normally have. So keep watching if you're interested to see how it works and also please subscribe to this channel so that this video can get recommended to other people interested in similar content. So first of all, let's go into the basic chat app of Infranotus so I can demonstrate to you how this whole approach works of mapping knowledge as a network graph and why it's so interesting and how it allows you to see how AI is thinking all at the same time. So as an example, I'm going to use the topic of ecological thinking and something I'm really interested in. And that's also like an integral part of Infranodus itself. I will link to the article on our website that explains this concept in more detail. But here I'm just going to ask what is ecological thinking? And I'm going to use the content source AI generated, GPT-4 AI chat. And I will say Infranodus ecological thinking. So that will be the name of the graph. And I click enter. And what happens here is that Infranodus visualizes the nodes uh, or the concepts in my question as the nodes. So ecological thinking and the occurrences are the connections. And it's a very simple approach that then allows us to build a graph from whatever text we have. So I asked what is ecological thinking. The AI answered ecological thinking involves seeing relationships and connections with, within ecosystems, understanding both the parts and the whole, emphasizing sustainability and interdependence. So we have this answer. It's also visualized as a graph. And as you can see here, it already provides us a really nice overview of the main idea. So for example, I can see what are the main topics inside. Here it's talking about relationships ecosystems and understanding, I can see in which context they're used. And because we're using graph to represent this information to build a map of this knowledge, we can also identify which nodes in this graph have more relevance or more importance, more influence, and which of them form clusters. So that will be the nodes that are closer to each other and have the same color. And one useful way to think about networks is to think of social networks because it really helps you understand uh, how this whole thing works. Imagine that words are like people and some words like to hang out together more often than others. When we build a social network based on this principle, we understand what are the patterns uh, that these words like to hang out in or uh, what are the most common co-occurrences of those words. And that enables us to understand in the context of this particular text which words form to topics. And this is how we identify those topical clusters. And they're also shown here in the main idea. So we can see that there's something on ecosystem dynamics, ecological engagement, sustainable interdependence. So it's like different groups of words. And the words that connect different groups together, like this one, will have high influence. This is actually all explained here. If you click on the question mark, it talks about the science behind it. But that's generally how it works and this is why it's so useful because it's not just a 
kind of like a tech cloud. It's actually a, a proper network graph that shows you which concepts of the nodes are most relevant, which clusters they form. So you have much more structural information on top and it enables you to interpret it much better. So here it provided us the first answer. Let's ask it to elaborate. Uh, for example, it says that seeing relationships and connections. Why are relationships important? So when I add another sentence, you see it's highlighted here and then it adds something else. So you also see how AI is thinking. It's always trying to kind of expand this graph of knowledge further by reaching beyond the, the periphery. And that's a really great feature of some AI tools. Of course, it depends on the setting that you have. We adjusted it specifically in that way inside Infranotus because the intention here is that when your discourse is too biased on a certain idea, it will try to disperse it. And when it's too dispersed, it will try to connect those ideas together. And this is what the measure of topical diversity here measures, actually. And that's why you can also use it to see how optimal your discourse is. The idea is that it's most optimal when you have distinct topics that are different from each other, but are still interconnected on the global level. If you're too focused on one idea, it's going to be biased. If it's too dispersed, it's going to say that the diversity is too high. So probably it's going to advise you to connect those ideas together. And you can actually see it in this panel here, semantic variability. So uh, it has a recommendation here and you can even use the AI to uh, follow that recommendation. So for example, here it says that one other advice that you have is now that you're quite optimal in terms of representing some ideas around this topic, how could you diversify it more? So then if you click here, it's going to focus on the smaller topics that it found in this network and then generate a question that you can then feed back into chat. So AI generated the question for itself to expand the periphery. And you see what's happening here exactly on this graph. It kind of added something else that we didn't yet have on recovering from disturbances. And here it's telling us that actually um, why it's important to think in terms of ecological systems is because it enhances resilience by supporting diverse connections that facilitate adaptation. So it's kind of doing with the graph what it's talking about already, which is really great. And one way that I like to use also this graph is that I can then select uh, the nodes that I want to connect. So for example, disturbances recover and maybe something on ecological so it doesn't forget what we're talking about and maybe also flow and adaptation. So you see I'm kind of making a path that I wanted to go along. It's like a knowledge map and now I want to create a new path through those points. And I can just select them here and then I can ask the system to generate a question for me, right? Or what I can also do is to tick this off so it will not use the context of this conversation to generate a question but it's going to be a little bit more diverse, so to say. And for example, here it says, how can ecological flow adaptation strategies enhance recovery from disturbances in ecosystem dynamics? And if I like that question, I can feed it back into the graph, and then it's going to generate an answer that will explore this topic further and provide me some more details. So this is why graphs and knowledge maps are so useful, because you can focus on the topics that you're interested in, and then generate some ideas that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise, because naturally we're only aware of what we're talking about on the moment. And the graph, it shows you what happened over time. And what's great is that if you have an intention to develop your discourse, you will understand, like with any map, that you need to go beyond the periphery of your current ideas. So I will always focus on the edges of the graph. I will select some nodes, and I will ask it to create new thought pathways through those nodes and that will hopefully make me develop something really interesting. So for example, here I can select them and I can even just click save. And because AI is always forced to generate an answer, it will think of an answer that will connect those ideas for you. And here it's, for example, talking about how ecological thinking involves seeing elements as part of uh, an interconnected system where recovery is not just about maintenance but also creation. In this view, to maintain a system's resilience, we actively involve and integrate ecological insights, fostering a cycle where recovering from disturbances leads to creating stronger ecological connections. This ensures the system's ability to adapt and thrive. So that's great. You see, we can already see that the main topics that we're talking about are ecological, 
uh, resilience, ecosystem, flow. So we have all these different ideas already represented. On the high level, we see that the main topics are e ecosystem dynamics, sustainable connections, system recovery, ecological integration. If we click here, we will see more resilience enhancement. So that's great. That gives us a high level idea and we can use this insight to see what we missed or we can focus on connecting these topics better. So for example, here you see it says medium because it became too focused on uh, a certain idea of ecological ecosystem and also this topic takes too much attention. So now if we were to develop it further, we would want to disconnect those topics a little bit or to develop each of them in more detail so they become a bit more distinct. And you can do that by clicking here, AI question to diversify. So it's going to generate a question for you that is supposed to diversify this discourse, make it uh, make all the groups of topics a bit more distinct from one another. But what you can also do, and that's a feature that I don't talk about so much, but it's really useful, is if you go into blind spots here, it actually shows you conceptual gateways. And conceptual gateways are the nodes that have high influence, but not so much connection. So it's like people that know the most important groups, but they are not necessarily overwhelmed by their social commitments. So that those people would be really good people to connect if you want to kind of get into this discourse or if you want this discourse to connect to something else. And it shows us what we should focus on to develop it further, to go beyond the periphery in an efficient way, where we would connect to the ideas that are relevant to this discourse, but that would also link it to something outside of itself. So this is really useful. It's like gateways to develop this discourse further. And here, for example, it's showing uh, enhance sustainability. We also have ensure and disturbance. So we can select those terms here. And like I said, either send them directly into the system or use this feature, which will be a bit more precise. Ask it to generate a question first and then send this question into the graph. So the question was, how can the deliberate introduction of control disturbances in ecological systems, what a great question, uh, enhance their sustainability by fostering more resilient and adaptive connections. And here it says, introducing control disturbances can ensure ecosystems adapt, adapting sustainability by strengthening connections that recover from stress, mirroring how controlled burns in forests reduce underbrush preventing larger fires and promoting new growth. I mean, that's amazing because you see, it just built a new branch of this knowledge. It went beyond the periphery and enabled us to expand uh, this uh, knowledge uh, by introducing, by entering into the discourse through those conceptual gateways. So this is why I find it so exciting and so interesting and so useful. And I encourage you to try it yourself on Infranodes because it's amazing what kind of ideas it can generate. And you see now we're talking about forests and controlled burns and fires, and that's super interesting. And I think it can be also really useful to uh, train a way of thinking where you never focused on one thing or you don't go in loops, but rather you explore different ideas. And if you get too much into the exploratory mode, it's going to try to help you connect them together. So this is why it's very useful. We actually have two videos on uh, this divergent thinking and convergent thinking. I'm going to link to them um, in this video so you can watch them as well. But this is basically how it works and this visual representation, this knowledge map allows you to see what's going on in real time and sort of direct the process of thinking in the direction that you want. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to show is how this works inside ChatGPT itself. So here I asked it the same question, ecological thinking. What is ecological thinking? It generated a very long answer. So the way it works in Infranodus is that it answers in very short, short iterations, so you have time to think with it. Like this is why we actually programmed it like this. But if you prefer the long form answers of ChatGPT, you can just use ChatGPT. And then what you do is that you open the Infranodus extension. Uh, it's at my toolbar, so you just click the button and then you can see the same graph, but it's in 3D, it's a new version. If you want to see more nodes, you can drag this node here and then it shows you what uh, ChatGPT answered on this topic. So for example here it's talking about ecological thinking and system, right? So you see the main ideas are that. If you rotate the graph you will see more. Impact and responsibility are some topics. 
you can actually see the top concepts here if you click on concepts but if I want to see like a more high level overview I can click on the topics and then see that it's talking about urban sustainability so it went into the urban topic much more than my own conversation complex interactions responsible impact applied policy so if I want to see what it's been talking about urban sustainability I can click on the context here and it shows me what exactly it's talking about urban sustainability I can also ask it to summarize all the statements on urban sustainability from this text. If it was a long text, it would be really useful. So here it says ecological thinking integrates systems thinking to understand complex networks like forests or cities, emphasizing sustainability and strategic planning. It guides the design of urban spaces with a focus on dynamic relationships and root cause analysis. So that's quite interesting. It gives me another point of view that I could use in my exploration, right? So it would be the same workflow here, but you would just add more stuff in and then you ask Inferno to regenerate the graph by closing it and opening it again. And then it's going to generate those ideas for you. And then you can identify the main topics, uh, gaps, and kind of like focus on those gaps and generate new questions that you could then feed back to the AI. So for example, here I'm generating on the gap between policy and responsible impact. Copy this, add it here, add this content, and then once it's generated, the answer is generated, I open Infernodus again and repeat the process. Okay, and you can actually also see here what the diversity level is. If you just switch everything off, you see it's diverse now, sufficiently diverse. And you can even see also the clusters which you could then develop further by looking at the periphery. So it's the same approach as in the main version, but just using the extension. We also have an Obsidian plugin that you can use with your Obsidian text as well. One final thing that I would like to demonstrate is how you can actually compare different discourses together because it can be sometimes really useful if you want to also check your chat against a kind of general understanding of AI on the subject. So to do that, you go into the apps, brainstorm ideas, type in ecological thinking and then AI generated, and here you choose generate AI ideas for the topic. And we will choose 10 statements, and I will click visualize, and what happens is that uh, AI generates 10 statements on the topic of ecological thinking. I can see what it's about, like mainly it's talking about sustainability, interconnectedness, and understanding nature. Okay, that's great. Now I can compare this discourse to the one that I had. So I click on that button here, compare graphs. I choose my chat on ecological thinking. And here I choose differs from. And then I click visualize. And what it's going to do is that it's going to show me what is in my original chat that is not in this synthetically generated data on ecology. So here, this graph shows uh, the relationships that I was mentioning, right? So, of course, the synthetic data probably has something on ecological, but here it shows the relationships that are not covered in the synthetic data. So, for example, controlled ecological disturbances, it's something it didn't talk about, only I was talking about that, right? If I click here, then I will only reveal the concepts that I talked about myself. So not just the relationships, but the actual concepts. So for example, I talked about controlled disturbances, uh, but the synthetic data didn't have any information on that. So that kind of shows me how my, my ideas are original. Now, if I click this button, I will reverse the comparison and show what was present in uh, the synthetically generated data, but not in my original chat. And here, again, it starts from just showing me the relationships. So I see that, okay, sustainability interconnectedness is something that uh, it generated. Um, maybe sustainability that results from interconnectedness. Okay, then it also talked about, for example, understanding systems. And Again, I use the words understanding and systems probably, but not in the same context. So, so this difference graph shows me which words I didn't use in the same context, which, which can be quite interesting for me, right? So for example, I can see that maybe I could talk more about sustainability or I could talk about holistic approach and so on. And then if I click here, it's in the blind spots and then reveal missing nodes, I will see only the topics that 
were synthesized, but uh, that were not used in my chat. So for example, holistic interconnectedness is something I didn't talk about. Fosters a holistic understanding of ecosystems, emphasizing interconnectedness and sustainability. So this can be interesting. I can actually click edit, copy this, and then go back to my chat add this into the system so I have something on holistic and then AI is going to respond with something that will try to support the conversation and as you can see we're building a new periphery here which is talking more about uh, holistic approach and how it can be used in design and so on so that's pretty interesting like we can really take this process far by representing ideas in that way and gradually building a map of knowledge and then using AI to query this map of knowledge and generate more ideas based on that. So I hope you find that interesting. Try it out on infranodus.com. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, feedback, comments uh, under the video below. And I hope you enjoyed and thank you for your time.